Hey guys, welcome to the Inner Gaze. I'm Allie. I, um, it's been a while since I've made a video and I apologize. I also want to apologize for my crazy voice because um, this past weekend was the 20th annual Del Close Marathon. And well, uh, which that just means there was like thousands of people and lots of talking and lots of interacting. So um, very little sleep, kind of like uh, today, <laughs> but, um, I wanted to make a video, A, because, um, I'm starting to get my website up and ready, uh, it's called theinnergaze.com, I'm very happy I got that website domain, and, um, I'm starting to put some material in there, so since we last spoke, I have started taking classes, uh, through Dolores Cannon's website for quantum healing hypnotherapy, and I finished those classes and I passed the exam and now I am practicing quantum healing. And I wanted to share with you guys, um, right now I'm in the process of getting my hours in. So I've got about 11 um, different clients that I've had already. And I have 25 to do before I'm technically a level one practitioner. So um, if you guys are interested, in having a session um, I'm ha very happy to do one for you and if you haven't heard of quantum healing or specifically Dolores Cannon's QHHT quantum healing hypnotherapy technique what it is is a it's a form of hypnotherapy where the client uh, is then introduced to their higher self and when I say higher self, there's a lot of different words for what a higher self could be. Uh, some people call it the subconscious. Um, I like to think of the subconscious mind as kind of like the deep, deep part of the mind, um, the part that's sort of guiding the conscious mind. I think of this more of like a higher power in, in essence, um, where if we are, if we are divine beings, and we have a lot more of our soul that lives outside of the body that is guiding our experience um, so that we can learn in the way that our lives are intended to play out. Um, I am a believer that we go into each lifetime with a set of lessons that we need to learn and therefore we choose our families, we choose our incarnations, we choose the people we meet, the people we love, um, the path that we take. and the jobs and the experiences that we have so that we can learn and if that is true then there is a part of our soul there's a part of our being that is all knowledgeable that is completely connected also not only with source energy but with basically all other living things um, so I like to call it the higher self or the super consciousness because this part of us is the all-knowing, all-intelligent, um, super connected being that guides us and is there to teach us lessons, is there to show us um, who we truly are and ultimately help us return to love because that is what this journey is all about. It's really helping us um, realize our true nature um, of being divine beings and um, being in control of our lives as much as we don't think that we are. So um, back to what the quantum healing is. So basically when the client is under, they're connected to their higher self or their super consciousness. Um, the way Dolores and Julia Cannon describe the super consciousness is it's the uh, big the big part of you, the big you. Um, so the big you has the answers. They have access to your Akashic records, which are um, a, the library of every single lifetime you've ever lived. So the idea is that you in this lifetime are playing out karmic cycles. Um, you're playing out specific interactions, specific um, divinely guided events so that you can learn from them. And if you do not learn from them, if you don't change your behavior, basically um, 
I'm just playing with my hair. Um, if you don't learn from them, you'll have another opportunity to learn from them because basically you'll be hand delivered a very similar um, situation with another person or another event. Um, so a QHHT session will start with the client coming to me and we'll have an intake session. So I'll, I'll get to learn all about their life, um, who's really important in their life, and ultimately through this conversation, we're deciphering what are those key patterns? What are the key um, persisting problems that keep showing up in this person's life? Um, what are the physicalities that they are dealing with that are problematic? Um, there are tons of things that can come up in one of these interview sessions. And it's really nice to just talk and learn about a person and, and get to know them on a deep level. And from there, um, oh, I forgot to mention, before the session even starts, you want to bring as many questions as possible. I mean, there's really no limit. You want to bring questions with you that you have for your higher self, that you have for the being that's guiding you, the part of you that is guiding you. So you want to know, a lot of people will ask things like, what's my purpose am i on the right path um a lot of people want to know about their love life what they're doing wrong um a lot of people um are also able to ask for healing so this part of you knows what you need to see what you need to experience what you need to release and knows what beliefs you need to reprogram in order to live a much more open, fulfilling, abundant life. Um, it is constantly trying to knock you over the head, like <laughs> basically to knock sense into you in order for you to learn those lessons. Um, it does everything it possibly can to get your attention. Um, but what it can do is, in some cases it's believed that what this higher self can do is actually miraculous and um, and this is kind of maybe a little bit out there of thought but um, it is thought that maybe it can even cure illness and disease and even cancer and that's Dolores Cannon um, she has done thousands of these sessions and she says she's seen miracles and I'm not one to shun miracles um, if, if I had a terminal illness and I wanted to not have a terminal illness and I was trying everything I can, I would totally be getting a, every sort of energy work to um, anything that's unproven and unscientific. And if I was really clinging to life and I wanted it to stay, then yeah, I would try it. So um, I think part of it is having an open mind. If you're open to this kind of healing, if you're open to this kind of um, deep, deep, sort of like spiritual woo woo supernatural healing then you got to be open to the possibility that um, it can work and it can do some miraculous things so anyway um, the person will create a list of questions so you want to question um, basically everything you want to know in your life in order to move forward and um, you can ask for any sort of healing that that you feel like you need and healing could range anything from I have chronic back pain um, to I would love to clear the fear blocks that are preventing me from entering a relationship that's fulfilling and and everlasting and whatever it is um, so the client needs to put some thought into what it is that they want to know and learn so first session um, is really about getting to know the client and then the next part of it is we go over the questions together and I need to understand them because basically when the client goes under I'm gonna be interviewing the client um, as they're channeling their higher self and what channeling means is they're going to be under a state of hypnosis or a state of deep theta um, which is a state that is not unnatural um, everyone goes into deep theta. It is the state that we wake up in, that I'm kind of in right now because of this weekend. And it's also the state right before falling asleep. 
Um, it's the state that's not in Delta, which is just sleep. Um, alpha is pretty much, it's a hypnotic state, but it's pretty much the state we're in most of the day. Um, you can get into a state of alpha literally just watching the television or reading a book. Like you're kind of nearly always in a state of hypnosis regardless of whether or not you believe it. Um, so anyway, the first part is the interview. The second part is the hypnosis session. So when you're in the hypnosis session, you are first shown a lifetime a lifetime um, you're shown something that uh, you need to see in order to help you progress and in some cases it can be a past lifetime it could be um, it could be a future lifetime um, it could be a lifetime as as a not a disembodied figure basically um like a an energy being you can be uh, an alien you can be i mean there are so many lifetimes or scenarios that we have played out um before this incarnation and they can range from literally uh, an interdimensional like galactic being that doesn't primarily live in a body that that can go into different bodies in order whatever like it, or it could just literally be your human lifetime back in the the why can't I think of anything in human history uh, medieval times where you're like walking home to your stone um, home and, and you're cooking on a fire or whatever it is the point is that there's something that happens in that lifetime that's that's energetically still carried in your current incarnation. Um, that this is a core wound that needs to come up in order to be released. Um, take it with a grain of salt. Um, I like to think in quantum physics um, terms where there are infinite potentialities of existence. Um, so if you are to make a choice Basically, what Scheringer's cat, I think, basically if there's a cat in a, um, like a box or something and, and there's a, a grenade in the, in the box with the cat and unless there's an observer to witness what happened to the cat, the cat is sort of simultaneously existing in a place where it survives and it dies in the box because you don't know if it's blown up unless you observe it. So technically it's suspended in all the potentialities of every outcome. So if that's the case, then I like to think of um, all of our past, future, and uh, simultaneous lives as being sort of simultaneous potentialities. Um, and whether or not they are truly actual things doesn't really matter in my opinion it's it's more about what are you being shown so that you can release energetically in this lifetime what's holding you back so you do that um, and some people are able to see very clearly and describe these lifetimes um, but really just go with it go with whatever is coming through say whatever is coming out um, talk about what you're seeing and allow yourself to sort of discover through, whether it's your imagination or not, <clears throat> what it is that you're seeing. And to try to get you a place where you can learn from. And then we take you through, um, if it is a past life, a death scene. Um, and this is usually very important because a lot of people carry trauma from their past life um, deaths in their current life. And um, then we bring in the subconscious. And I keep calling it the subconscious. That's what Dolores can. I want to say uh, the super consciousness. Your your big you, your cutie pie, beep, 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 beep. your your um your ventriloquist. I guess I'm. I don't know. I want to talk about the higher self in another video. Maybe I'm gonna do that uh, right after this, because oh, I've been really like <laughs> after doing these sessions a bunch of times. Not only do you have I met my higher self enough times to know that that part is the real me and this part the thinking mind is just like 
stupid. <laughs> Not stupid, it's just the, the ego really plays tricks on you. And um, the subconscious is beyond the ego. The super consciousness is behind the ego. The big you is behind, beyond the ego. Anyway, so we connect with this part. And this part... Um, <laughs> This part is, it's pure energy, okay? So, it's gonna feel like an intense, maybe Reiki session or something, but the vibrations that you'll experience your, in your heart and your, your head, like you'll feel the energy actually really shift when this part comes into you. And you'll be able to speak freely and even if you're consciously aware during this, um, you will be answering questions that you didn't think you had answers to. And you should not judge yourself. So let me also back up. When you are under hypno hypnosis, a lot of people think that they will be out cold. That they'll be completely losing control, that they won't remember anything. I would say that out of the 12 sessions, including myself, so out of 13 sessions that I've witnessed, there's only been one session, my friend, uh, who was out like a lame, a lamb, out like a lame, uh, out like a lamb. Um, and when we finished the session, I was like, do you have any idea? Like, how long do you think you're out? And she goes, I don't know, like 20 minutes. And I was like, uh, it was an hour and a half. Um, and she had no recollection of the past life or any of the messages that came through from her higher self. So I was like, all right, damn girl, you got to listen to this and talk to me. Uh, anyway, so, but everyone else has been consciously aware to some degree of what they were saying, what they were seeing, and that they were in a hypnotic state with me in a state of trance. Um, and it's, it's not to be, it's not to say that this isn't working. Um, it's just to say that I think as a society, we've all reached a level of um, ascension in our awareness that we are actually in the process of merging with our higher selves more fully and being guided more fully by our, our higher selves and our spirit team and pushed into our purpose and pr pushed forward um, at a very rapid rate. So, um, it is not a surprise to me that during these QHHT sessions, a lot of people are literally aware that they are speaking, but they are physically feeling the energy come in. They're physically receiving the healing, um, and they are actually getting messages from their higher self. So that doesn't mean it's not working. Because even as the practitioner, when the higher self comes in for the patient, I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm in a state of trance too, but I can feel the energy in the room shift and um, enter my heart. And um, it's almost helping me guide the questions too. It's, it's a beautiful experience. It's, it's quite supernatural, but uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it because it is actually very natural. And um, anyway, so the second part is really about why. <laughs> uh, why? was this lifetime shown to me? Um, why did I just experience this? And a lot of it has to do with your core wounds and the things that you're trying to eradicate from your life. These patterns you're trying to break, the karmic cycles that you're trying to break right now. And luckily for us, we're in a beautiful time. Um, they're about to be broken. I mean, all we are entering a phase in humanity where uh, we are ascending past karma and a lot of people are, are already in that process and um, are about to graduate from that process and some people are about to start that process um, and that's kind of why I was guided to make this channel to begin with um, we're all on a healing path no matter what who you are whether you're consciously aware of it right now or not like we're all the same we're one and the same we're on the same journey we're returning back to love we're returning back to our original nature and we want to have beautiful lives so um i don't know why i went on that tangent i can't remember so anyway you contact the higher self and the higher self is there to deliver the messages that you needed to hear 
you needed to have this experience because you needed to be shown a lifetime where um, trust was a main issue for you or you needed to understand where your core abandonment wound came from and or you've had a really tough life in this life and honestly you just needed to see a lifetime where you had it easy you know where where you had love and um, you felt guided and you felt connected to your divinity and you felt connected to your higher self and um, it knows you it knows what you need to hear it knows it knows everything <laughs> that you really needed to hear and um, to help you heal so there's really nothing to be afraid of unless you're afraid to move forward and heal um, afraid if, if I mean, it can be scary to hear your own truth or even to wonder where where that truth is coming from. I know that that can be scary. So if you're literally watching this video and you're like, huh, like, not for me, like, then stop watching the video. I mean, th that's what truth is, really. Like, you either resonate with it or you don't resonate with it. Um, so, you know, it's up to you. I... If you're going to troll this, then, like, you, I don't know what else you're doing with your time. I would say spend more time resonating with things that, that feel true to you and ring true to you than, um, than not whatever. So that's how, I, that's kind of how I feel. Like, with, with all this, you're going you're gonna to be drawn to it. If, if you're vibrationally a match to this information, then you're going to be like, oh, my God, book me up a session or... I really want to Google that and find out more um, or I feel like I felt energy before what the hell does that mean and that's your truth that's what you came to this video for that's what you're learning that's my intention I'm not here to convince everyone to start doing this this is not my job my job is just to put out my truth my experience and whatever catches for you is the ultimate gift you know if I can help somebody heal just through my experience and my sexy sexy voice uh, then yeah, that's why that's why I'm doing this. I don't do this for the for the cheese. I don't do this for the dollars. I'm doing this for life. Like this is what life's about. Help each other. Share your truth. Share your experience. Be real. Be authentic. Uh, anyway, go to hypnotherapy school. That's what I'm doing. So um, yeah, the higher self is gonna tell you what's up, and it will come in and it will heal you and it'll also explain what it's doing while it's healing you um lately there's been a lot of heart chakra activations um throat chakra activation so our throat chakra is responsible for our creative expression um our communication centers which a lot of times have been blocked um our hearts which are programmed if there's a lot of fear in there so there's a lot of work that's being done to our Hearts and actually our higher heart chakra, which um, is another chakra that's opening up right here. So um, a lot of my activations have been coming from my higher heart. So um, yeah, I think that's uh, a lot of those things are happening. And um, it's super interesting. Sometimes when they go in, they, they literally talk about how they're healing the energetic body. Um, one person that I did a QHHG session, suffered uh, a head injury, a few head injuries actually. And um, she was the one who was out cold. So the higher self was just talking. <laughs> and um, and I had her on the phone too. So I, I was convinced she wasn't even under because her voice was just the same. Like when I'm in a synambulistic state of hypno hypnosis, I'm uh, like, I my voice changes which is, but this person was talking like they were just best friends, you know? And, um, it actually was funny, um, because when the healing began on her head injury, um, she did talk about how there was, they were taking a kind of like string of light and they were, um, connecting certain parts of the brain down through the neck, um, and even brought in Archangel Raphael to, um, put one hand on the ear to put green light through that. And they were describing this and I was like, all right, yeah, come get it, Archangel Raphael. Like, please 
just help us, um, help us heal. And, um, it was very, very interesting to see that, uh, there is a process to this. Um, and I'm feeling it too. So there's part of me that's like, uh, you know, well, it could be her belief system, but at the same time, no, why? For whose benefit is that? Um, and then why would I be feeling an energetic, uh, feeling when this healing is happening? It's quite, it's just, it's very weird. Um, but the way I see these, these healings, um, working, um, is because, and this is just what I've taken to be true up until this point. Um, I haven't done enough of these to really make my own conclusions yet, but I will say that your energetic body is related to your emotional body, your mental body, your physical body. So it's, if your energetic body carries wounds from past life traumas or from, you know, early childhood traumas, we keep certain blockages in our energetic body first. And when those exist, those then, um, translate to our other bodies, our mental bodies, our emotional bodies and our physical bodies. Once things enter our mental bodies, um, that's when they become deep seated fears, beliefs. Um, and that's where the subconscious, I think the word subconscious comes from. Like they become almost, um, subconscious guided thoughts and beliefs, um, feelings of unworthiness, um, uh, feelings of resentment and feelings of not belonging, um, feelings of desperation, feelings of, um, needing to prove, like needing to prove yourself to someone or something, being on the defense, who you are. Like some of these things are so subconscious that they've developed, you know, you can say they developed in early childhood, but they're so subconscious that um, they, uh, they feel almost like every decision that we make. It's almost like fight or flight, like when you're operating from like your lower chakras. Um, you're reminded of this belief and then you're triggered and then you're like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go, this feels bad. Um, so anyway, uh, the energetic body carries that much weight. So um, if it influences your mental body and your emotional body, um, that is gonna, A, 100% influence your experience um, in life. And then B, um, in some cases, and this is just a belief of mine, you can take it or leave it, it will uh, turn into a physical ailment. And it's said that maybe some cancers are basically rooted in resentment, just anger that you're carrying forever. Um, no, a lot of people aren't gonna like that, hearing that. But um, it, it's, it comes from trauma that um, we're carrying and not releasing. Um, and if you equate that to sort of like how stress can make you sick, um, I don't know, uh, take what you will from that. But the healing that happens happens to the energetic body. I don't think, I don't know, I have yet to see a tumor shrink. Uh, Dolores Cannon, you know, who's no longer with us, has said that, you know, she's seen t tumors straight up shrink before her eyes. But, um... Yeah, I do believe that the, the energetic body gets worked on so that these beliefs can be re um, reestablished and um, smoothed out so that the experience can change. And then um, once the signal is gone, there is no need for the um, physical reminder in your body. Um, so that's how the healing aspect of it works. And... Um, like I said, if you believe in miracles, if you believe um, that there more, there, there's more to the eye, um, there's more that the eye can see about your experience and um, what you want to do about that, then, then yeah, this would be an opening. This would be an opening for you. So, anyway, um, I think I wanted to. I guess talk about QHHT and the higher self and all that in this video and then maybe I'll make another video because I'm kind of feeling like I'm on a roll.
to talk about the higher self and what I think the higher self is and how it's connected to everything um, and about my experience with energy and um, yeah and if you like this video I don't know should I post this on my Facebook why not I'm gonna be QHHT things I'm gonna be doing that more often so I might post this on Facebook if you guys are uh, watching this entire video up until the end um, hey what's up how you doing um, you know me personally this is what I do now and um, go to my YouTube and uh, subscribe if you're interested it's the inner gaze um, at YouTube and um, if you're curious about a QHHT session my email is the inner gaze 144 at gmail.com and um, I love you and I think you're awesome thank you so much for watching and if you watch through the end like you're my hero thank you so much uh, and uh, have a blessed day I've never said that before, but I just, I hope your day is wonderful. Thank you.